Hey, Brian Germain here. We just had a reserve ride and I wanted to talk about it a little bit because I've seen it before several times and it's easily avoidable, but you got to know it's possible. This was a pilot shoot and tow malfunction and you can see how the bridle was packed under this flap. There is no way for that pin to get pulled. None. And so it's obviously, you know, I asked the, the jumper, so who did the pin check, right? Because there's, there's guilt there too. And there was none. Nobody checked. So, you know, this 45 jump wonder, you know, didn't, didn't get a pin check, get a pin check. The other thing is, um, I want people to think about and debate. See these risers after you, you pull the cutaway handle? They could be going anywhere in a terminal velocity situation where you've got a pilot shoot and tow. I understand you don't want to be attached to your main parachute when, <clears throat> when the, the reserve comes out, there's a pretty good chance in many cases, not this case, but in many cases where the pilot shoot will now uh, be cleared because the reserve pack tray is empty, allowing for slack to sort of translate down and soften up uh, the main pack tray and now the pin goes. You don't want to be attached to your parachute, but the question I want to ask is, do you want to cut away before you fire your reserve or do you want to do it after your reserve opens? You will have a little bit of time if your reserve opens and the pin pops to, to pull that handle. But I, I don't like the idea of, of floppy riser syndrome, right? Look at that. That could, that can and has entangled with reserve, the free bag bridle lines, there's many possibilities. Uh, so I, I don't think this is such a good idea to teach students right off the bat. You know, that's, I think it's nice to keep things simple for, for new jumpers, but at some point we should at least talk about it, you know, discuss the possibility of a reserve deployment uh, procedure that's going to be backwards from what you're used to instead of cutaway reserve in this case it's reserve ripcord get the reserve over your head and then quickly uh, cut away the main risers in that way if it, it goes you know if the, if the main leaves it's all just going to keep going it's not attached to you. you won't get a two out you don't get a down plane or an entanglement likely um, you might want to release the rsl as well but in most cases that's not an issue unless you have a double-sided RSL, and then you should always release both sides of that RSL. Um, and uh, I just, I don't know, I've been thinking about it a lot. I've, I've had a lot of discussions with jumpers all over the world. You know, what do you think about, um, you know, sort of amending our procedures uh, for, for a pilot shoot and tow? So you don't have to change, but please talk about it consider that maybe there's some merit to this this different idea so, thanks very much this is brian germain and i'm gonna go make a jump here at skydive the falls near niagara falls beautiful place so basically there's a feed so it tells you all you know sort of most recent events you can communicate directly with me or any of the other folks and ask questions so just like Facebook, um, and then down here, the session recordings here, dating back, uh, well, three years, um, several, several times a week. And these are all an hour to an hour and a half, at least most of them are an hour and a half, um, with the dates on there. And what we're working on now is also adding specifics of what we covered, um, and then the live events three times a week, like I said, and all those have just got the link in here. Community conversations, improving your landings. These all have different, you know, videos or articles or things like that. Mind game, uh, lots and lots of virtual reality simulations showing, you know, tweaks to the pattern, um, you know, based on winds, different drop zones, things like that. All kinds of good stuff. Ground launching. You know, a bunch of the talking skydives are on here as well. You name it, man. You name it. You know, even I added a new category this week, the holistically healthy skydiver. We're talking about nutrition and exercise and, you know, how to feed our brains, you know, all kinds of different things um, that, that relate. You know, it relates.
um, you know, your performance is something that uh, that is going to vary based on how you feel. So I I feel like approaching skydiving from a holistic perspective is is essential. Somebody that has natural ability and understands the situation completely can be held back by their drinking problems. (laughs) You know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? Or what there's, there's all these different things that we have to be looking at. You know, if, if we're all in, you know, I am, you know, everything I do is part of my skydiving training, everything. (laughs) Um, I think you'll love it. I think you'll love yeah. it. You know, and in people use it sort of like a podcast or on a road trip or something. You put in your earbuds or put it on the car, you know, system, and just sure. listen to the conversations. And we get folks that are that are really new, and we got mm-hmm. folks that are instructors. We got base jumpers, you know, wingsuit people. We got paraglider folks because I like that stuff too. And we'll, yeah. we'll talk about whatever the community wants. And believe me, I don't, I don't have all the answers in, and, and that's the good, the good thing about community is that we can find the answers together. Right. Absolutely.